Imagine walking in the forest. You've strayed far from your group and become lost. You hear a sound very close by, a bear. You try to move away from there, but the sound keeps following you. You start running, but the intensity of the sound doesn't diminish. Finally, you get tired and sit down, leaning against a tree, and the sound suddenly stops. But at that very moment, you notice a pair of eyes watching you from between the branches of the tree across from you. You want to escape, but you're too exhausted, and the creature in the tree suddenly pounces toward you. If you've placed yourself in the shoes of the protagonist in this story, or were able to visualize the events in your mind, you've more than enough activated a structure in your brain, the amygdala. The brain is composed of four lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. The amygdala, the subject of this video, is located in the deep parts of the temporal lobes, with one on each side of the brain at about ear level. Just like the temporal lobe, we have two amygdalae in our brain. Its name derives from the Greek word amygdale, meaning almond, due to its almond-like structure. As a part of the limbic system, which I will discuss shortly, the amygdala plays a crucial role in the formation of emotional memory and emotional responses. Fear is one of the primary emotional responses it governs. When a dog barks at you, when you watch a horror movie, or in any situation that warrants fear, the amygdala gets activated. It enhances reflexes and contributes to the formation of a fearful expression on the face. Without the amygdala, the feeling of fear wouldn't occur. According to a report by Science News, a woman named S.M. has a damaged amygdala due to her urbach the disease, rendering it non-functional. As a result, this woman is unafraid of anything. This could put you in great danger. For instance, imagine jumping into a pool full of sharks just out of sheer curiosity. I mentioned that there are two amygdalae in the brain, one located in each of the temporal lobes. This two amygdala are anatomically symmetric, However, functionally, they have some differences. The right amygdala is responsible for negative emotions like sadness, fear, and feeling unwell, while the left amygdala also handles positive emotions in addition to these. But when it comes to interpreting and storing emotional content, these two amygdalae work together. In studies of the amygdala, rodents or monkeys have been the most commonly used animals. Scientists have, at times, removed the amygdalae of various animals to observe their effects and gain a better understanding of the amygdala's functions. For example, in 1937, Heinrich Kluver and Paul Busey examined monkeys with damaged amygdala and observed that these monkeys couldn't recognize familiar objects and lost their sense of fear. Even mother monkeys also mistreated their babies. These behavioral abnormalities were later named Kluver-Busey syndrome. In the 20th century, with the development of brain imaging technologies, the functions of the amygdala became better understood. In this century, studies have linked the amygdala to various conditions such as anxiety, personality disorders, autism, and more. Additionally, the amygdala is responsible for triggering the fight-or-flight response in the brain. Of course, the functions of the amygdala are not limited to these. You may have watched numerous videos on YouTube about making the knowledge you've acquired more lasting. I'm not sure how many of these videos mention the amygdala, but there are two ways to make the information we learn more permanent. The first is to establish an emotional connection with the information we've learned. The second is repetition. Information that is repeated extensively holds special importance for the brain. The brain places this information in a distinct location essentially tagging it with a this is important, don't forget label, and this information is transferred to long-term memory. The same occurs when we form emotional connections with the information we've learned. The stronger the emotional connection, the more lasting the learning. And once again, it is the amygdala that controls all of these processes. Now let's delve into the limbic system I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The limbic system, which includes the amygdala, is responsible for various physiological processes such as nutrition, protection, defense, sexual desire, olfaction, sleep regulation, and stress. As you can see, 
The limbic system holds vital importance for us. Limbic system, it consists of four regions, hypothalamus, thalamus, hippocampus, and amygdala. Normally, I wouldn't have discussed the structures other than the amygdala, as they are not the subject of this video. However, I cannot not mention the hippocampus. Just like the amygdala, the hippocampus is responsible for memory, and it's even often referred to as the memory center in many sources. It plays a crucial role in transferring short-term memory into long-term memory. However, the hippocampus has a distinctive function that sets it apart from the amygdala. Navigation. Yes, the hippocampus essentially serves as our navigation system, enabling us to assess our surroundings in three dimensions while walking, running, or engaging in any kind of movement. Furthermore, the structure of the hippocampus is not unique to humans alone. According to an article published in the Brain Research Bulletin by a scientist named Rodriguez and colleagues in 2002, hippocampal-like structures have been discovered in birds, reptiles, and fish. It is believed that the origins of this structure, which can be considered the precursor of the hippocampus, were observed in early vertebrates. However, the current structure of the hippocampus is known to have first appeared in mammals. This implies that the abilities of thinking, perceiving, and being aware of the events in one's surroundings are not exclusive to humans, but are present to varying degrees in many living beings we encounter. Returning to the amygdala, I mentioned its significant connection to the emotion of fear. Anatomically, the amygdala is composed of several subunits, but it will be unnecessary to describe all of them in this section. When it comes to fear conditioning, the signals that reach the brain are directed to the basolateral complex of the amygdala. Here, associations with memories related to the stimulus are formed. The emotional memory stored in synapses triggers fear-related behaviors through various pathways. Consequently, physiological responses such as freezing in fear, increased heart rate, elevated respiration, and the release of stress hormones occur. In other words, when we suddenly encounter a snake, see a dog running towards us, or watch a horror movie, the physiological processes that occur in our brain are briefly like this. Is it over? It's not over. The amygdala is also involved in the formation of olfactory memory. If you think that the sense of smell is not as crucial as our other senses, you might be partially mistaken. While you may not consider it as important as the sense of sight for humans, in the context of creatures in the natural world, the sense of smell can become even more significant than vision. Animals use their sense of smell to escape from predators, hunt for prey, and even choose mates. In the natural world, the ability of a creature to form memories based on sense signals from its predators or prey is highly important. To establish this olfactory memory, the proper functioning of the amygdala is essential. Through the formation of this olfactory memory, the sense signals received from our environment evoke responses in us, such as happiness, excitement, fear, or anxiety.